Hi, and welcome to Sign Up for Dublin Community TV. Today we have such an interesting programme. It's bursting with information. Alvin investigates different departments in a hospital. I'm going to roll up my sleeves to reduce, reuse and recycle. Kevin brings us another fascinating grammar fact. And today's deaf success story is Louis Neasling, an award-winning director. Enjoy the programme. Hi, Dr. Sennon. You all right? I'm here on a journey of discovery. Ever since I was little, and even now, I've been completely baffled by all the big words used in hospitals. So, I've decided that today, I'm going to find out what they mean. But I have no idea where to start. I have a blood test appointment too. But I'm terrified of needles. I know what you mean. It's like a different and difficult language up there. The hospital is a big place. I won't be able to show you all the departments, but I can show you some on the way. Especially the ones you might need in the future. That would be great, thanks. I wouldn't know where to start, hence the outfit. Come on. What is this department? This? This is the Accident and Emergency Department. Or A&D. This is where you'll come if you fall and break your leg, or have a heart attack or chest pains. You'll come straight here. If people call 999 in an emergency, this is where the ambulance brings them. If you ever need medical attention for something that isn't an emergency, you're better off going to your local doctor or GP. The reason for this is that treatment is priority based, so the sicker you are, the quicker you'll be seen to. So you'll be waiting a long time, okay? Next up is the radiology department. Come on. This is the radiology department. This is where you go to to get different kinds of x-rays. An x-ray is a photograph that allows doctors to see the inner workings of your body, such as bones, growths, diseases and tumours. Pregnant women come here for ultrasound. to check the development of an unborn baby or an MRI scan a tube shaped machine that shows the inside of your body on a special monitor a mammogram checks the breasts for growths or tumors you can also come here for radiation therapy 
which is a treatment involving exposure to radioactive substances to kill cancer cells. Wow, there are so many different departments here. Come on, there's more to see. Hey, what does this mean? This is the oncology department. It's where patients come for cancer diagnosis and treatment. Your body is made up of millions of cells. The normal process for a cell is to grow and die, then a new cell grows and so on. Some cells grow where they aren't supposed to and they don't die either, but they continue to expand forming a lump or a tumour. There are over 200 different types of cancer. Breast cancer, testicular cancer, skin cancer, and so on. Treatments include radiation therapy. When the cancer is exposed to radioactive substance that fights the cancer. There is also chemotherapy. Injecting chemicals that fight cancer. A lot of work and research is being done into cancer these days, and if it's caught early, a lot of it can be treated successfully. That's fascinating. Here's Wait. where... I'd like to guess. This is where you'd go if you have a heart problem? That's right. This is the cardiology department. Where patients with suspected heart problems or diseases are diagnosed and treated. Common heart ailments include angina, where the blood flow to a part of the heart muscle is limited, causing intermittent pain. And cardiac arrhythmia. An abnormal heartbeat. A slow, irregular heartbeat or a fast heartbeat, resulting in palpitations, dizzy spells, or blackouts. You might get hooked up to an ECG here. This is a test to record the speed and rhythm of the heartbeat, looking for any irregularities. Interesting. Come on. This one is the physiotherapy department. People come here if they have problems with movement, caused by a, a birth defect, illness or by accident. And a physiotherapist may give you a number of exercises to help strengthen the damaged muscle or bone. These exercises will make you heal quicker If your leg is broken, or if your spine is damaged, you may get referred here too. <gasps> My appointment's in a few minutes. Are we nearby? Oh yeah, come on. This is it. Phlebotomy department. My phleb, uh, whatever, is fine. I'm here for blood test. That's got nothing to do with my phleb, however you spell it. Uh, no. The phlebotomy department is where people go to get their bloods taken. It's then sent to a different department called haematology, where they test the blood for any irregularities. 
If you see heme at the start of any word, it's usually associated with blood. For example, if someone suffers from haemophilia and they cut themselves, the blood can't clot and they're at risk of bleeding to death. Thanks, Dr. Sennon. Hospitals really aren't that scary once you know all the long words have simple meanings. Mm. Doesn't stop me being terrified of needles, though. Yeah, you'll be fine. Good luck. Thanks. Hello. An acronym is when you use the first letter of each word in a sentence to form an abbreviation which still means the same thing in its shortened form. So, for example, IDS is short for Irish Deaf Society. The I is taken from Irish, the D is taken from Deaf, the S is taken from Society to become IDS. Same goes for AIB. A is taken from Allied, I is taken from Irish, B is taken from Bank, AIB. Third example, ASAP. The A is taken from AS, S is taken from Soon, A is taken from AS, and P taken from Possible. ASAP. See the fourth example. For your information is shortened. F is taken from for, Y is taken from your, and I is taken from information. FYI. rubbish in such a small amount of time. This is my bin after only three days. Now add everyone else's rubbish. That's a lot of rubbish. In Ireland, one person produces ten times their body weight in rubbish. In a year. For example, say I weigh nine stone, multiply that by ten, making ninety stone. I produce ninety stone of rubbish in a year. Wow! So, where does all this rubbish go? It goes to the landfill. Ugh. Ireland has 97 landfill sites, which is where our regular black bin collection goes. But did you know that two thirds of the rubbish that ends up in landfill could actually have been recycled? Recycling is taking materials from products you've finished using and making new products with them. For example, instead of throwing paper into the landfill, paper could be recycled into newspaper or toilet roll. And glass bottles could be recycled into new glass bottles and jars. So, why should we recycle? Landfills are ugly. The more we recycle, the less we put in the landfill. The piles of rubbish left in the landfill is giving off gases, including methane. Harmful gases like these, pooled together, are called greenhouse gases. 
The Earth is surrounded by a natural layer which allows the sun's rays in and out, stabilising the Earth's temperature. But greenhouse gases are forming a harmful layer under the Earth's natural layer, allowing the sun's rays in but stopping them from escaping, causing the Earth to heat up. This is global warming. Global warming might sound like a great idea. Hot and sunny all year round, right? No! Did you know that heating of the Earth is causing the world's ice to melt, which means the sea's water levels are rising, causing flooding and damage to homes? And we've already started to see examples of climate change, which means long-term change in the kind of weather a country usually gets. For example, Ireland's summers are usually warm. But do you remember last year's rainy summer? And we're not the only ones seeing the effects of global warming. Producing new items, new glass bottles, and new paper from scratch uses a lot of energy. The machinery used to make them need fuel and electricity to run. And this creates another greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, CO2, increasing the layer around the earth, adding to global warming. However, making paper from recycled materials, rather than making it from scratch, uses 70% less energy, keeping the environment safe and healthy. OK, so how do we recycle? Every household in Ireland has a green and a black bin. Soon you'll get a brown one too. But how do you know what goes in which bin? I'll show you. The green bin is for recyclable things. Everything that goes into your green bin is taken away to a recycling centre to be recycled into new products. You can put in paper, light cardboard, cans and tins. Both must be flattened. Cartons like milk cartons with separate lids and flattened. And plastic bottles such as fizzy drinks or shampoo bottles with lids off. And remember, they have to be flattened as well. Everything must be clean. Remove all food residue. Then we have the new brown bin. If you haven't received one of these already, you'll be getting it within the year. Into this you can put cooked and raw food, which is food that hasn't been cooked yet, peelings from fruit, veg, out of date food, which is food that is past its sell by date and may not be safe to eat, meat, fish, tea bags, paper napkins and cardboard, or paper packaging with food on it. You can also put grass cuttings, tree and plant trimmings, flowers, but you can't put tin foil or plastic in here. And finally, your black bin. Remember, rubbish that is put in here will not be recycled and will be dumped in the landfill. Try to put as little as possible in here. In fact, the only things you need to put in are polystyrene. You know when you buy a new TV or computer and it's packed in a white substance in the box? That's polystyrene. Nappies, tin foil and plastic packaging with food on it. We should try to cut down using these things, so that less will go into the landfill. For a full list of what can and can't go into your bins, look at www.def.ie. 
If you have rubbish that can't go in either the green or brown bin, I'll give you tips on how to get rid of it. Recycling centres like this are popping up all over the country. They'll take almost anything and make sure it gets turned into something new. Doesn't look very exciting, I know, but these centres are saving the world. So, what can you bring here? There are bottle banks for glass bottles and jars. But did you know you can also bring clothes, furniture, like tables and chairs. You can even bring bicycles, CDs, electrical goods from toasters to freezers, plastic bags, bottles and packaging like for fruit. But remember, they must be clean. You can bring computers, mobile phones and TVs, batteries and light bulbs. So instead of increasing our landfill, why not set all your rubbish aside and pop down here once a month to get rid of it all? Clothes go here. Food tins go here. Drink cans go here. Plastic bottles go here. Clear glass goes here. Green glass goes here. Brown glass goes here. Newspapers go here. Garden things go here. Wooden things go here. Metal things go here. Large electrical things go here. Construction things go here. Come on, save the planet. Dividing up your rubbish into food, plastic and paper is only the start. Don't throw out your rubbish. Try and reuse it to get less rubbish. I'll show you how. Why not try to buy items with little or no plastic packaging? Like, like these for example. This one is better because there's no packaging. Bring reusable bags to the shop instead of getting plastic ones every time you make a trip. And if a shopkeeper automatically gives you a paper bag when you can carry it yourself or use your own bag, tell them no thanks. Thank you. If you're sick of junk mail coming through your door, you can contact the Irish Direct Marketing Association and ask to be taken off their list. If you want more information about this, look it up on our website www.deaf.ie. If you have clothes or items you don't want, bring them to a charity shop. They'll sell them on to others and donate the money from the sales to charity. You might even pick up a few bargains while you're there. Also, the charity Jack and Jill can turn your old mobile phones, empty ink cartridges and digital cameras into money to help sick children. Three special words, reduce, reuse, to use things again, and recycle. If you remember them, you can save the world.
I recently completed the digital photography course through DALS. It gave me the chance to learn how to use a camera, make a short film, add subtitles to it, how to add effects or change the background. It encouraged me to use a camera with confidence and it gave me a new hobby, photography. I enjoy the class because the tutor is deaf and uses ISL. He's very experienced and easy to communicate with and it's more accessible for all of us. I prefer to learn from a class as opposed to reading from a book. The English can be quite difficult. Sometimes I don't have a clue, especially when I see a word I don't understand. And learning from his class is easier. If my tutor was hearing, I'd be lost. I'd have no confidence. If someone was asking questions, I might interrupt them. I'd be so lost. In the DALS class, it's so easy. We're all at the same level and it has boosted my confidence. I'm really looking forward to the next DALS class I take. I want a new hobby. I don't know what yet. Louis Needling is an award-winning TV and film director. He grew up in South Africa, where he was inspired by his father's love of film. Later on, he worked as a presenter for a deaf program. At the same time, he was also a researcher and a runner. This is a person on set who does different jobs while studying directing. He then began working as a filmmaker and won a scholarship to study in the UK. He moved there in 2001 and started work with the BBC directing See Here, Switch and other mainstream programmes. His short film, Coming Out, earned him multiple awards. He left the BBC to set up his own production company Mutt and Jeff Pictures. Louis is currently directing Hands On and this program. Sign up. Louis says being deaf is not an excuse. Don't give up if you want to achieve your full potential. That's all for today's programme. Next week, Dominic is confused at the chemist. And I'm on the hunt for my dream house. But will I be able to get a mortgage? For more information on classes, whether it's digital creativity or computers for beginners, call into the IDS or check the website at www.deaf.ie. See you next week.